Okay, so I had a message the other day from a chap called Paul Compton, and he was asking me what kind of bag that I use when I go uh, and do my uh, hiking and do the photography and the vlogging and all that kind of stuff. And because uh, he himself kind of struggles to fit everything into his bag that he needs to take, so. Um, whilst I was chatting to him, uh, I s it suddenly occurred to me that I'm not actually done a what's in my bag video for just my um, the equipment that I take with me when I go hiking and stuff. And uh, so I thought I'll take this opportunity to do that, and I'll also a little bit later on in the video I'll be doing a little bit on the new equipment that I'm using at the minute. So one of the things that I I've got is now a Canon M50 which is one of the new Canon cameras out and I'm using that for all the vlogging so we're just going to go through why I chose that and also there's a few other little bits of equipment and also software that I'm using now as well okay so first things first let's get on to the hiking equipment <sighs> absolute beast yeah it looks like a lot and it probably is a lot but uh, kind of essential for what I need so I'll just go through it all. <clears throat> okay, um, so there's some essentials that you kind of need to take hiking with you, especially like up into the lakes or even, even into Scotland and all that kind of stuff, you know, in the UK. First of all, it's a 35, 45 litre bag. Go away, go on, good girl. So yeah, it's a 35, 45 litre bag um, uh, and it's a low alpine bag. Um, it's not a camera bag, it is a uh, actually a specific hiking bag, um, so yeah, it makes, makes life a lot, a lot easier for me, um, but I do need to change a few things, so this isn't like kind of uh, how I really want to essentially carry on, um, but uh, you know, it will do for now. Okay, so I'm just going to go through some stuff and show you guys what I take with me. First of all, on the outside, you can see I've got some walking poles. Now, if you're going into the lakes or into any kind of mountain area, poles, to me, they're essential, not to everybody, um, because, you know, it gives great stability. And when you've got a big bag like this on your back, you really want those uh, those poles, really. Uh, and especially if you're on slippy ground as well, it just gives you an le extra little bit of purchase and something to stab into the ground. And not only that, um, it's, it's also said that if you're using poles, you're taking about 25% of um, pressure away from your legs if used properly. Uh, and also you're giving your arms a little bit of a workout as well. So, you know, from a fitness perspective, really, really good idea. Okay, let's put this on the floor. Right, so as you've already seen in my vlogs before, I use a Manfrotto 190 go tripod uh, it's a four section tripod it's made of carbon fiber and i've also got the arca swiss head on there as well uh, which is quite a heavy um, tripod head to be honest but it's really good it takes uh, the arca swiss fit in um, so i can use things like my l bracket and stuff on my camera so yeah really really good tripod that one and this is my three-legged thing. I've had this quite a few years now, a lot longer than I've had the Manfrotto. They're a really good lightweight tripod. Um, you know, I do use that with my Fuji, so my Fuji can sit on there, so I'm not worried about it. You know, it's better for probably a lighter camera, not necessarily as heavy as the digital SLR that I've got my D800. So, okay, so that's me tripods. Um, in The back part here, I keep my filters. Uh, so it's all of my leaf filters in there. There's the filter holder. There's also uh, my polarizer in there as well. There's also a big stopper in there. Um, map, compass, and map case. Very, very important if you're venturing off into like the lakes and stuff, very important that you take one of these and master how to use one because the amount of people that get lost and they're relying on their phones, GPS and all that kind of stuff, sometimes technology goes wrong and batteries run out and sometimes you can't necessarily get a signal, you know, it's, it's a mountainous area after all, you know, so signals do get blocked and you're kind of in the middle of nowhere too, 
but this is essential. Learn how to use one. Uh, I'll take like a Lucasade Sport with me as well. It's a still drink. Kind of saved me quite a few times to be honest, because you know if you're getting a little bit lightheaded, which I have done before when I've you know really been getting into the hiking and all that kind of stuff, and you're going uphill, and then like you know sometimes you're a little bit lacking in sugar, and that gives you a nice instant hit of sugar. And also on the outside of my bag, I've had to upgrade my selfie stick, which goes with my new vlogging camera. Right, going in to the top of the bag. Okay, so going into the top of the bag. Um, normally this top pocket, I just leave this, um, this is currently empty at the moment, but there will be food in there. There will be enough food that I need to take with me for the day, but also extra, just in case you get into a little bit of trouble. Okay, so this is all falling apart. Okay, right, top pocket. On the inside of the top, I have a Leatherman, which I take with me. Uh, so you know you've got your pliers, you've got a knife if you need it, you've got screwdriver bit there as well and also in the pouch there is a selection of other bits. Um, you've got everything there that you need. Very important, head torch um, and not only a head torch you want spare batteries for it and I also take another spare torch which I'll go on to in a minute. But yeah, as one of the essentials, um, if you go onto Google and type in uh, Mountain Rescue uh, essential items for hiking, you know, they will give you the real basic list of what you really need and want to be taken uh, because you don't want to be getting caught out. Um, especially the time of the day that I go up, I'll go up really early in the morning and also probably last thing at night. So, you know, you, you definitely want a head torch. Um, you know, it's really, really essential. Okay, so in there, that's just a survival kit. And in here, it's just a real basic survival kit, which, you know, you've got uh, things like a whistle and there's some matches in there. Um, there is a, a, a natural wire saw and down but also a mirror, which helps with signaling for help if ever, ever need to. And also, I do carry a GPS as well, which, again, fully charged, but never rely on it. It's just a good, good way if you're feeling, you know, you need a little bit more of the vocal confidence in your navigational skills. Um, you know, this will give you, I think it's like a 10 digit, 8 digit um, grid for reference. I think it's 10. Really, really accurate when, um, you know, if that's working properly. Know, and you're getting a really decent signal. Okay, so in the top, I've got my camera bag. That's for the Canon M50. And this is the bit I really want to change because I've just got loads of different camera bags for one for the drone, one for my SLR, one for the vlogging camera. And I'll be honest, it is getting a bit ridiculous now um, and the bags alone are going to add a lot of weight so um, one thing I am looking at is just trying to buy a camera insert for a bag um, just to go in my hiking backpack um, just to have a little bit everything a little bit more organized everything's all in one place as well so um, but that's my drone so I've got my spare batteries on the side in there and then I've got a drone the remote spare propellers in there as well just in case I need them and in there Nikon D800 with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens on there keep my Fuji camera in there as well and then I've also got my remote I also take a spare mobile phone that's not got a sim card in it but it's just a spare one that I can take for operating the drone or, or recording audio and stuff um, but yeah there's spare batteries and all that kind of stuff in there as well so now we're kind of just moving on to like the essential hiking and stuff so uh, another thing that I need to move on to is I want to try and put everything into dry bags as well um, so slowly over time I'm just trying, trying to buy individual ones and I like these ones the best but they've got a window on them so you can actually see what's inside them but if you get colour coded ones you get them in all various sizes so in here I've got 
waterproof jacket if I'm not wearing it at the time. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, but I use a lot of Paramo stuff, uh, which I discovered about a year or so, just over a year or so ago. And really, really good stuff. And this is just a, a wind stopper against another Paramo one. But yeah, really, really good. Lightweight as well, um, and it's quite compact. So they compact down into nothing, especially. Also, the other good thing about putting stuff in a dry bag is you can squeeze all the air out of it, wrap it up. Um, I'm not as it kept dry, but you kind of you're using a lot less space as well. And in here, I keep spare batteries. So there's a, a little battery pack in there, as I said earlier. There is also a micro USB cable that's good for charging my head torch, and there is also my lead for the iPhone, another, and then there's also two packs of batteries. So one of them's got AA batteries and the other one's got AAA batteries. Um, and they are basically for the GPS and also my other torch. And this is also a spare battery for the head torch. Water, very essential item. So I keep one in the hydrator then you've got a pipe and all that kind of stuff saves taking your backpack off and grabbing your water and all that kind of stuff really really good idea um, I normally take uh, depending if I'm just going out for the morning or whatever I normally take a litre and a half plus I've got the Lucas Aid as well so I have got two litres of fluids with me um, and if it's colder um, I will take my flask as well which you know you really want a warm drink especially when you when colder weather we have another dry bag which I keep nice woolly hat spare top uh, a buff which this one's not a warm one um, normally I'll keep a warm one in there as well but this one is actually a UV one so it actually keeps you it's quite a cool material, so it's quite thin. But I don't like wearing uh, baseball caps in the summer. I uh, don't mind wearing a woolly hat, that's fine, but I don't really like wearing a baseball cap. So this, I can use that as a bandana. And then that's just gonna keep the sun off of my head. Pair of gloves, they're waterproof ones. Really good pair of gloves, seal skin ones. One of uh, my best buys. I've always been reluctant to spend money on, uh, on gloves, because I always lose them. But it's for them, not use them. Uh, packet of tissues and let's see what is here. And there's also some alcohol gel as well, just to keep your hands clean when you want to eat something. And I also take first aid kit. This is a mountain first aid kit from Life Systems. Really, really good first aid kit. Probably a bit overkill, mind but I've kind of got this and then just uh, catered it for my own use. So there's also personal medication and all that kind of stuff in there if you need it. Um, but also things like, um, you know, blister plasters and all that kind of stuff. But it gives you a really good base for a kit. They do do smaller ones. They do like a camping one, which is probably a bit more better to take with you. But yeah, really, really good. Um, first aid kit and well organised as well, which is what I like about it. So you've got all of those essential items in there. I'll keep a foil blanket and also uh, there's a glow stick in there as well, which is attached to a piece of string. So, you know, in an emergency you can break it, uh, mix the liquids together, get it glowing, and then you can spin it on this piece of string and then it just makes it a little bit bigger. Um, which I thought was a really, really good idea. So. Okay, that's that. Uh, not forgetting a pair of waterproof trousers as well, uh, which is quite essential when you don't know what the mountain weather's going to be doing. And just recently, I've been carrying a pair of Michael Spikes um, just in case I needed them, but fortunately, I've not had to use them. But they're only really good for thin snow kind of thing. I only really take them because I've actually got a pair of proper pair of crampons and an ice axe, which again is really essential when you're going up in the winter. Good ice axe, 
um, that's going to stop you from slipping down the mountain uh, and also you can use the pick on the bottom to tap into the ground and just making sure that you've got good, good uh, solid bit of ground that you're going to be stepping into. Uh, you've also a pair of ski goggles because if there is a white out, you know, really really handy to have those. At least you'll still be able to, you know, keep your eyes open to see where you're kind of going. Not that you can see much in the white out, but it does protect your eyes a little bit. And then a pair of proper crampons if you if you're serious about going up into the fells when it's really icy. It's all very well having the proper equipment, it's also knowing how to use it. So make sure you know how to use it. There's some really, really good uh, winter climbing skills courses that you can do. And you know, you can have good fun with them. Finally, what I'm keeping here as well is a survival bag, which I might change that to a emergency shelter even. Um, so we'll see, but it's, that's a nice cheap option. So yeah, there is a lot of kit there. As you can see, let's just spin that around. So yeah, there's a lot of kit there really. Um, you know, plus with all the kit that I've got on the floor here. Um, you know, and then also there's, there's you know, your, your walking clothes as well that you're gonna be wearing that day. So I normally wear a base layer, you know, a decent pair of walking trousers um, and uh, some walking sock and a good pair of walking boots as well you know um, really really essential to have all of that kind of stuff that's this section done so we are going to talk about some of the new equipment that I've got now okay so let's move on to that okay so now moving on to like the new equipment and new software that I'm using at the minute so as I mentioned earlier I'm now using the Canon M50 to do my vlogging with and uh, the main reasons why I chose this camera um, first of all I needed a flip out screen for a start so you know when I'm doing the talking part of the camera I can see where I where I'm positioned in shot but also really wanted a, a mic input which is just there and that works really well in terms of getting some nice external audio on there good little camera so when I was chatting to the lady on the Nick uh, on the Nikon stand on the Canon stand um, I might get shot now uh, yeah uh, when I was talking to the lady on the Canon stand and uh, I was zooming in after and over the G7X um, which doesn't have the mic input um, had the flip out screen but doesn't have the mic input and it is a slightly lighter camera um, but when I did compare the two, it was actually kind of negligible. This is obviously a little bit heavier. Yeah, they were the main reasons. Uh, and this was a nice little camera, really. You know, I can take up on the fells just hiking, you know, if I just going out hiking for the day, not planning on really doing much else, but at least I can still take this. And, um, you know, it'll be a really good stills camera. It shoots 24 megapixels, I believe. And it also shoots 4K video. Um, but yeah, the premise I had before, uh, so I have my GoPro, that's not got a screen on the back because um, it's one of the older ones um, but even the newer ones don't have like a flip out screen and all that kind of stuff so when I was trying to use that and carry it uphill and stuff you know I'd have to connect it to my phone and you know it would just be so time consuming trying to use it then I'd new use the uh, D800 to do a lot of like the kind of b-roll shots but it was just too big and bulky you know so that kind of crosses the gap between the two you know i've still got the control with zoom and kind of gives me a light what lighter weight option um you know when it's mounted on a tripod that i can just go hiking with and i can have it in my hand and not worry about it too much so yeah that was really a big kind of deal breaker um along with that i've now got selfie stick i needed to have a bit more of a beefy selfie stick in comparison to what i did have because when i was using it the other day in my latric video which you can see up here so all of the b-roll shots and all of the blocking shots were shot with that um, when i was trying to use it with this this was trying to rotate because it's quite easy to turn that so the weight of it was just 
want the nut to turn, rotate, so I've now got one that I can now twist and lock into position, and you know, it's going to be a bit more heavy duty to hold that camera there. The other thing that I've got is the Rode Video Micro, which uh, I'm now using to you recording the camera at the minute. Um, but yeah, that's uh, really good and positive kind of introduction into my video. So again, it's going to give me backup audio, and it's going to give me extra audio in in some of the some of the vlogs as well. So you know, you know, some of the sound effects it will be able to record. So yeah, um, really, really good. And also, I am now using some software called uh, Adobe Premiere Elements. Um, to edit my vlogs. So before I was using iMovie, which is great for what it is, you know, very, very good piece of software, which, you know, was already installed on my Mac and, you know, uh, and it's done me a really, really good turn. Um, but I thought it was time to kind of have a little bit of a switch and try and get a little bit more control um, over video editing and all of that kind of stuff. So this is kind of like the next step up right so that's about me done i think um i've got a few other things coming up i want to try and uh, get some a few more bits like filters for my uh my drone for instance and i want to try and get an insert as well for my my hiking bag to try and put all of my kit in so there'll be some things that i've been looking to get into so if anyone can give me any recommendations on what to get um currently looking at potentially a Monfrotto LED light and also um, the Polar Pro filters to go on the uh, drone so yeah they're the kind of things that I'm looking at um, but yeah that's uh, that's it so guys if you've liked this video please give us a thumbs up um, if you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel Thank you very much um, to the guys that have already subscribed and for your continued support and your continued feedback. Um, if you want to give me any feedback or ask me any questions, please pop a comment in the comment box below. Um, so, until next time.